Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for organizing the event. I attended some of the sessions. I think they've been brilliant. Uh, I'm Ovidio Bagdasar. I'm an associate professor in mathematics at the University of Derby. And uh, I'm co-presenting with James Howell, director of, director of international programs at the Breta. James will present the first part of uh, the talk, and then uh, I'll take over and uh, focus on uh, the aspects from uh, Darby. And then he will also lead the demonstration. Thank you, Ovidiu. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, as Ovidiu mentioned, I'm the uh, Director of International Partnerships here at Breda Inc. Uh, my primary responsibility, just for um, uh, a quick uh, introduction here, is to oversee the uh, 63 out of the 82 partner institutes in Canada that use our platform, as well as the provider networks in the United uh, Kingdom that are using Elevate Me Math through um, uh, a, a national teacher training organization. We have 175 uh, providers also using our Elevate My Maths platform. Um, so today's agenda, very quickly, is we're going to be talking about uh, the challenge, which is the title of um, uh, this presentation. We're going to take a quick look at the data. Uh, I do have some source data from both uh, the UK as well as uh, international data and, and Canada to share with you. Then I'm going to get into uh, the solution, which is Elevate My Maths. And then as Ovidu mentioned, we're going to talk specifically about the case study at Darby and uh, what the future holds. And I'm also going to sneak in a quick demo of the platform. Okay. So first, just to frame this, I want to talk about the challenge. Uh, the challenge is the divide between the numeracy required uh, for full participation in, in today's technological society, as well as, um, uh, and sorry, the distinction between that and where numeracy currently is in both working adults, as well as um, the youth coming up to the workforce. This is what's called the numeracy gap. Uh, you do hear it from time to time, mostly the focus in the media and the public is literacy, but there is a numeracy gap as well. And it's something uh, I firmly believe we should focus on. Some of the root causes here are definitely societal attitudes. I'm sure all of you are familiar with um, the expression, uh, you know, just study for this test, you'll get through it, you never need to use it again. Um, you know, the myth of a math gene, uh, you know, the, the kind of attitude that is ingrained in primary education, secondary in education, and then up to further education, and then ultimately life post education. Uh, does have a compounding effect, a snowball effect. And um, when I work with uh, educators who, who teach math, they often uh, tend to point the finger at the person beforehand. Uh, and it, it's a very common thing that I see that they have to remediate on the same concepts for certain, certain students uh, that would, would have been taught or should have been taught prior to their uh, class. Another thing that we see is the over-reliance on calculators, but Breda, our mission is really to make sure that not only everyone can be numerate, but that they, um, they need to be numerate. Uh, and this is something we build into all of our platforms and it's our, part of our ethos and philosophy when we build something for uh, students. So quickly, just gonna take a look at some of the data here. We have two sets. Uh, one is um, from the Program of International Assessment of Adult Competencies, PIAC, as well as the uh, PISA student results. So on the left here, we have uh, kind of a startling statistic. 55% of Canadian adults are below the desired level of numeracy as defined by OCAD. Uh, so that's more than half okay, of our, uh, our working population. And then when you look at 15 year olds, um, you see similar results. Um, here, I just want to quickly talk about the trend. So in 2009, uh, it, it was pretty good for Canada, and there was a small dip um, that actually started a specific project that I'm going to refer to later. And then we did see Canada slowly increase in the rankings, but overall, it's been kind of stagnant or downward. I had put a small note here that's kind of interesting, uh, that in the last round of data for 15-year-olds, for um, five Asian Pacific countries that typically score well did not report. Uh, this was for political reasons, but if you look at it that way, the score for Canada is pretty much flatlined um, over about a decade. The PISA results, uh, for those of you who don't know, do come out every three years. The 2021 data is not yet available. I'm anxiously looking for it. Uh, it's always of interest to me. Uh, so quickly, just looking at the trend uh, in the United Kingdom, so similar, uh, although slightly better than Canada, uh, just less, 49% of British adults are below, below the desired level of numeracy. Um, so you guys are doing slightly better with the adult population. 
Uh, however, in the in the youth, the 15 year olds, both boys and girls is aggregated between the two sets. Uh, the UK is typically just below the OCED average. Um, and it looks like in the last uh, six years, there's been quite a swing. Uh, actually, if you look back to 2012, both down and up. But again, I want to point out that in 2018, there was five, uh, five countries that typically score in the top 10 uh, that did not report. Um, so potentially, you know, you're looking at 18. That's still a big swing. That's still a big swing for the UK. So this is alarming and, uh, and, and for a couple of things, uh, reasons, and it's something we really want to uh, affect. Uh, now, what sort of impact does the gap and the divide that grows between the youth and adults um, result in? Just quickly, again, from something we've done here in Canada called the College Student Achievement Project. Uh, it was a 10-year research project that looked at um, colleges and uh, employment uh, after um, graduation as well as success coming into the college. Uh, there is a growing employment skill gap. Um, so the employees are definitely, um, you know, numerate coming out, but then as they get into the workforce, uh, you know, the gap is, is apparent and uh, it's something that is not there that the employers are expecting. What that can translate into is a pay gap. Um, in terms of socioeconomic factors for gaps, you often don't hear numeracy uh, discussed, but I truly think it's one of those underlying ones that people aren't focusing at. Uh, research shows that, um, you know, a 1% point increase in numeracy scores can translate into a 20% wage increase. Uh, it also goes without saying that STEM field jobs are um, heavily dependent or related to mathematical concepts and numeracy, uh, and STEM fields usually earn more, and there's a lot more openings there. So the opportunity is something that, um, you know, numeracy has uh, a big factor in, in preventing the gap, okay? Another uh, finding from that research project was about a third of students coming into college programs, not just STEM fields, you can see here, all, all programs coming into uh, post-secondary in the province of Ontario, but a third of students were at risk of not completing uh, their programs solely due to their mathematics score in that first semester course. Um, about a third, it's actually 31.8. Uh, ju just quickly, good grades here is defined as 60% or higher. So um, the at-risk students are everything and below. They followed them um, in the 10-year research project to the second semester and found that a lot of them did not even um, return to further education at post-secondary uh, out of that third group. About 40% of those students did not return to academic studies at all. So in response to the findings from the College Student Achievement Project, I want to talk about something that happened here in Ontario. Uh, we had all 24 colleges that are publicly funded uh, get together and work with the Ministry of Education as well as the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities uh, to create something designed for um, student success and retention at the college level. Uh, at that point in time, um, Vreda had a technology called Elevate My Math. Uh, which was actually selected for this uh, platform, and it became branded as the OCNT, which stands for the Ontario College Math Test, uh, which is something that all uh, 24 colleges use to either place or um, pre-screen students um, in, in various programs across uh, the province. Okay. Now, just quickly, uh, I'm going to recap as well, because that jump from the OCMT to Elevate My Math sometimes confuses uh, some people or it might get lost. So Elevate My Math is uh, a technology Brett has been providing. Uh, Brett is an award-winning Canadian tech ed company um, that focuses on post-secondary education. Uh, our, our motto is a vision, or sorry, a world where everyone enjoys math. Uh, it's quite, quite a powerful motto and ethos. I really like it. Uh, numeracy is super important to me. Uh, and Elevate My Math is an assessment for learning system that aims to identify gaps by diagnostic testing uh, that targets one numeracy group at a time, uh, then provides uh, adaptive and interactive upgrading modules, um, and then, you know, complements that package, wraps it up with a bow on top, with a summative to reassess the students um, to the desired level of numeracy. Um, now, it's a flexible system that can be built for different applications, but it was designed for basic college maths. Okay. Now, this system uh, has won a couple of awards. Um, 
Some of them here are uh, uh, transfer best transformational project for raising the level of numeracy and supporting student success. Uh, it, it's won this both in Canada as well as the UK uh, in the e-assessment awards. Um, we also work in uh, France and Luxembourg, uh, and we've we've won awards there for um, uh, some of our different assessment platforms. They're obviously in a different language, uh, and we've also won for our other college level platform called uh, Intro Math. Um, and it's actually through these types of um, transformational projects that we do engage with that we uh, interact with folks like Ovidu. I think it was actually at one of these um, award ceremonies where you met someone from Beretta at one point in time. Is that correct, Ovidu? I think you're still on mute. Yes, thank you very much, James. Uh, I will now take over the presentation. Um, I think uh, numeracy is very important, as, uh, as mentioned before. We checked some statistics, and uh, as uh, James uh, mentioned, about 70 million adults don't have adequate numeracy levels. And uh, what is even more worrying is that it seems that this numeracy gap is getting wider. Uh, so even based on the existing data between 2003 and 2011, the numeracy gap, uh, so the levels of numeracy came down from 26% to 22%. So this is the percentage of English population with skills roughly equivalent to GCSE C or above. Now, uh, this is very much in line with the number of students taking A levels in maths, which is about 15%. Out of those, maybe 5% will get straight A star. They'll go to top universities to study mathematics, STEM and so on. And I thought that this was a concern, but actually the bigger concern now for me is that what are we doing? What are we providing for the rest of the students who don't take A-levels, who don't go through STEM education? And I went through these reports by the National Numeracy and it's a very sobering read. Economic impact is huge, about 20 billion pounds a year. I'm thinking if you invest only 1% of this into education to improve STEM education, I think you can turn these figures around. And uh, you might wonder why do we need numeracy at university? Because I think we have a duty of care to support every learner. Uh, this is not only for uh, maths, but this is for everyone in the university. And I, I can not accept uh, statements like I've always hated maths. I, I'm sure that you have all heard this uh, in uh, conversations with students or in the market or anywhere. And it seems that the current approach does not deliver a numerate for workforce. Now, uh, why was I personally affected by this? Because I'm teaching a big class of computational mathematics students for computing year one. And in our university, if I'm lucky, my math students have a B in A levels. But the students in this class in computational mathematics might have no A levels at all. And I have to take them to a certain level where they can be competent and get good jobs in the end. And they have to, uh, to get decent understanding of set theory, logic, linear algebra, graphs, number theory. But sometimes my experience was that I had to teach Pythagoras or to remind to Pythagoras a few times uh, during the week when I was teaching linear algebra to help them with vector operations. Uh, large class, about 130, 180 students, low NSS course when I took up the module. And then I redesigned the module completely. I built a, a computer-based assessment, 800 questions. I said I would never do that again uh, if I don't have to. But it works. It still works. I developed a textbook, recordings, math jokes to get them on board. This approach seemed to work well for the class. Uh, feedback was very good. I have this feedback that I always sucked at maths, but even in school, I barely scrapped the C. Now I enjoy it. So what I was doing at that time seemed to work, but I could do with some support. And then I bumped into the gentleman on the left, Professor Graham Orp, who, uh, who was the previous director of international programs at Treta, at the BCME in 2018, and he said, my dream is a world where everyone enjoys maths. I said, fantastic, that's my dream as well. And then I said, let's collaborate. He came, I invited him for a workshop at Derby, and then we started to work together. It was a great development lesson for me. So I learned a lot. I, we started, we signed a partnership with Vreta, and then we started to adopt what they had off the shelf for a pilot project. But then it, things really, really developed nicely. And we were able to exploit the results of uh, the pilot project. We were able to redesign their whole res res EMM resource and uh, make it fit for purpose for our students. So you will see in a moment uh, more details. So first phase was uh, we designed an advanced numeracy skills uh, course. 
which was actually designed around the needs of uh, my students. And also I picked the, the best fitting resource they had in Canada. This was 60 questions diagnostic, lots of remedy lessons, interactive lessons for students, then summative test. We designed, uh, uh, we designed the uh, certificate as well. And I tested on 300 students. I had my students plus students in foundation, some students in engineering, also some students in Greece. Feedback was very good, especially from the students who are coming back into education after many, many years. We are a widening access, widening participation institution. It means that many of our students are, are the first in their family. So very few of our students uh, have uh, had uh, ancestors who 800 years ago were in Cambridge or Oxford. So many of them are only starting now to come to university. And students with long study breaks really benefited from the lessons. Uh, then we did some analysis of this data. My main uh, interest was uh, covered. So my students were now basic, able to fill their numeracy gaps. Uh, basic maths was, uh, I didn't have to repeat obvious maths in, in class. Students engaged very well. So on average, they spent 100 minutes on the pretest, 200, about four hours on the remediation, and then about an hour in the post-test. Uh, we were able to measure improvement in performance, 14% in maths, 17% in year zero, and then up to 40% in Greece. So they're also learning the English alongside with the maths, and also seen pass rates increasing to 90% in the course, from 84 to 85% in previous years. So it seemed to work for me. But then in the second phase, we looked at the full catalog of EMM lessons, about 240 lessons, and sitting together with colleagues from across the university, we looked at what they needed, what their students needed to know. And then we started to package this, uh, these lessons into different courses. And uh, the D1 Fundamentals courses, of course, covers the very basic maths. And this is now taken by students in psychology, in finance, in business, in nursing, and in, other, in the education. Then more advanced courses, D2, basic algebra and geometry, and D1 and D2 uh, cover what I need in computational mathematics. Then psychologists also need statistics, so we package the statistics lessons in D4. Then nurse, nurses, biosciences, what they need is covered in D10 and so on. So mixing and matching these courses covers your covers needs of various students from across all our colleges. And uh, we managed to finish the integration with Blackboard. So this can be deployed straight into your, uh, your classroom. Now it takes five minutes to, to deploy. Uh, working together, so by sp simply spending time together, we were able to, to support each other. So we built these new courses with input from our, based on our needs. Then this helped Greta move to the next uh, level of uh, product. So, now, instead of having a very long diagnostic and summative, we now have a, a, a modular design for the courses. So we have short diagnostic. So each course is now made of topics. And for each topic, we have this pattern with the diagnostic, remedy, and the summative. We've also uh, developed a proficiency assessment in the end. And if you get 80% in the diagnostic, you can skip the remedy lessons. Then if you get 80% on a, in each of the summatives, this unlocks the proficiency, proficiency assessment. And then if you get 80% or more in the proficiency, you get a digital badge as well. So we work on the digital badge. But we made this available through the library as well. And uh, I use it almost every week to give feedback to students. I had the engagement above 100%. There is, of course, some detail around this, but engagement has been very good. Uh, and only based on the dashboard we co-designed with Vreta and three bubbles in this uh, dashboard, I can give feedback in two minutes uh, on a weekly basis. So I look at the, how many students do I have in the remedy lessons. This is the, the one with the highest uptake. So 174 students engaged. Then 128 students, I look at the S4 bubble. So how many students have completed all the summatives? This is uh, the number of students who engage properly. And then this is the number of students who completed the course. And uh, we have developed these digital badges. The design and deployment was finalized in uh, December, 2020. And more than 400 badges uh, were awarded, mostly for courses D1 and D2. So the course is related to my class and we are now in the top three badges for the university. Uh, these badges can be shared with employers and also 
uh, I don't have this figure in the slides, but more than 1,500 students went through this uh, project over three years. Uh, if you click on this link, uh, you'll see my digital badge as well. I worked uh, alongside with the students, so I, I try to lead by example. And uh, this digital badge has information on what did you have to do in order, what does the badge mean? What did you have to do? What are the rules? And uh, you can share it then with employers on LinkedIn, on Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Now, is this uh, for me? Uh, you might ask, it was for me. So I was able to get uh, my digital badge as well. I have a PhD in applied mathematics from Nottingham. I have uh, a PhD in pure mathematics from Romania, but now, uh, the advanced uh, numeracy skill certificate was the cherry on top. I had lots of likes on Facebook. I shared it. And uh, yeah, I hope that, so this, uh, I think this produced uh, some impression to my students. I also had uh, tweets about uh, these uh, resources from students. Uh, Brett with another student who came back into education after 14 years gap. And uh, this, uh, this project is also well aligned with uh, research we do in our university uh, along the lines of mathematical anxiety. Uh, so the fear of mathematics, there are many reasons why people stay away from mathematics. And uh, yes, I work closely with uh, Dr. Tom Hunt, a specialist in maths anxiety. We have now quite a few studies going on with Botswana, with Romania, with Iran, and so on. And uh, I think this is the kind of reaction I'd like to get uh, from everyone. So I used to think I was rubbish at maths, but now I know that I'm not. So this was from a child of five years old. And I think uh, now Elevate My Maths is available through the Maths Hub, through the library. It can be used, the resource can be used for UOD applicant massive online open courses. We did it last year. We have supported charities in the, in the region, in Derby Opportunity Area. We have uh, a charity in a very uh, disadvantaged area where one of my graduates was fighting with drug gangs to take children off the gang to put them into education to say to so that they don't get into prison and we provided this resource for 60 of their students uh, it's now offered to universities in the uk and abroad and also uh, thousands of teachers from NASPET, so from the national association of school-based teacher trainees are benefiting from resources also developed from uh, with our uh, input and we have a uh, partners uh, abroad as well. We work with them to submit uh, proposals for education, uh, educational mathematics in schools in all these countries. So yeah, I think, uh, I hope the future is bright. And uh, yeah, I think this is a battle that we have to fight uh, because it's not as easy, even if you have the ideal resource. We I worked with colleagues in the Center for Excellence who have access. So it's like with our IT services to have this deployed anywhere it was needed. And we, uh, I had colleagues to deploy it, but some of them did not send message to their students to tell them that it was deployed. So even if we have everything in place, success is not guaranteed. So that was my uh, plea for uh, numeracy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ovidio. So I'm just gonna quickly um, get into uh, the demo here. So all of you as a participant of EAMS also do have access to this platform. Uh, you can just log in, go to Reddit 2021 and click on the Elevate My Maths uh, platform. Christian was uh, kind enough to send out an announcement only recently, um, but all of you have access to this throughout the entire duration. And I do encourage you to check it out yourselves and see if you can earn the badge. So after you click on it, you'll actually come right into the platform. It looks like this. Um, and uh, you can see here, there's actually uh, there's actually data coming in now. It is live, um, and I'll go over that actually really quickly. Uh, it's kind of kind of interesting. So all of you are enrolled in this as a student, and what this is representing is on diagnostic one, on question three, uh, no one's gotten that correct, and on question seven, no one's gotten that correct, and on question eleven, no one's gotten that correct yet. But I haven't looked at the numbers for how many um, have actually done it. I don't imagine it's it's many. But this is the teacher dashboard looking at the aggregate data. You as a student, you'll see your own lesson and diagnostic performance, uh, lesson being R uh, for remediation, forgive me. So the way the um, platform looks and reads, this is called the resource list. Um, they have labels, you'll open it up. 
and you'll get access to uh, a diagnostic in that topic area. So again, this is that fundamental foundational course at Darby uh, for D1, but we do have a whole host of additional topics. Uh, we thought this would be the easiest one for everyone to get through and just try it out. Um, uh, but we do have higher level maths. So the student would begin with a diagnostic. I'll just quickly go through and uh, I'll probably do poorly. Okay. But you have the ability, um, you know, to, to do this yourself. And you have not only uh, multiple choice questions, you'll have constructed response type questions. Forgive me, I'm on a laptop screen. So the Zoom might be a bit too much. Um, You'll have word problems, multiple choice, technology enhanced items. Uh, we have different assessment items for different um, types of concepts and they do test different perform performance expectations in a couple of different ways. After you submit the assignment, uh, you will get your score uh, and you'll also get to take a look at the, um, the solutions. Now, all of the solutions are algorithmically mapped to the question. All of the questions are algorithmic variants. So each and every time someone takes the assessment, they're gonna get different questions. Uh, they're all within the same performance expectations. Now, following the diagnostic, you will notice you only have one attempt, um, but this is meant, uh, this is intentional. It's meant to be the benchmark. And your diagnostic score is actually going to map out your own learning plan through the uh, remedy modules. So based on your score, you'll have more or less to do. And there's a certain score, I believe it's 80% uh, for this course overview, is that correct? Yeah. Um, if you score over 80, uh, you'll actually pass out of, so you won't be required to do any of these lessons uh, and you'll move on to the summative. Uh, now, before I play one of the lessons, I just wanna point out the summatives do have uh, unlimited attempts. The way these work is it has a looping feature. So if you didn't score 80% on the diagnostic, uh, let's say you scored 50%, you had some upgrading to do, let's say uh, the operations, um, the order of operations was something you needed work on. Then you go through the summative and you go from 50 to 60. Uh, you're not yet at the 80. So the system will actually open up uh, the lessons for you to go through again. And the summative will actually um, reduce the number of questions each and every time to get more targeted and focused on that uh, specific subtopic you missed. So the questions you got correct will be removed from the subsequent summative as well. Okay, so there's a looping feature to get them to that level of mastery. And then the carrot on the end of the stick is the proficiency assessment and the badge. Uh, they do have two conditions here. The proficiency assessment, you're required to score 80% on all um, summatives to access. And then the proficiency assessment is cumulative of all four topics. And you need to score 80% on that to get your own badge. Okay, so I encourage you to go through it. Uh, it is it is quite fun. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes, but, uh, oh, I see more students are actually, or sorry, more candidates are coming in. See, the dashboards are live. So that's good. That's encouraging. Uh, you guys are trying it out. Um, but I just want to quickly show you one of the lessons here, uh, just to give you an idea of how these work. Okay. So James, unfortunately, we're, we're running out of time. Um, so uh, I, let's encourage everyone to go onto your site, onto your demo and play around with it. Um, and then we do have a question appearing in the, in the question section of the Moodle. So we can kind of continue the discussion there. So I apologize, I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, we have mm -hmm. Martin scheduled to go now, but we really appreciate this. This is super interesting. And I have a whole bunch more questions for you guys. Um, we'll, talk at, we'll talk after the session. Thank you so thank much. You, and I apologize yeah, thank you so for, much. No, no worries at all. This was wonderful. And we all have many questions for you, but we, we will have time during the live chat. Uh, we have live chat session scheduled, so we'll have time for that. And then also we can continue our discussions online. And I look forward to taking the assessments myself. Um, 